Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next EDW session called Manage Data Smarter Using AI slash ML Powered Data Quality, which will be presented by Raj Joseph, the CEO of DQLabs.ai. All audience members are muted during these sessions, so please submit your questions in the Q&A window on the right of the screen, and our speaker will respond to as many questions as possible at the end of the talk. Please note that there is a linked form at the bottom of the page titled EDW Conference Sessions Survey. This is where you can submit session feedback and we encourage you to do so. So let's begin our presentation now. Thank you and welcome Raj. Hey, uh, thanks Jim. Uh, thanks University for this opportunity. Uh, uh, let's uh, explore a little bit about uh, how organizations can manage data smarter, uh, primarily using data quality as an approach. Um, so first let me start off uh, giving an industry uh, what's happening in the last two decades in terms of all the traditional data management we have been drawing. Uh, today, if you see the landscape, uh, businesses are overwhelmed with a large amount of tools. Uh, if you look into the data landscape, you have tools for data catalog, governance, governance uh, and some are based on 1.0 uh, frameworks and some are 2.0 frameworks. But over and all, uh, if you see the any environment which has lots of data, we are uh, have lots of different uh, tools and practices and process and procedures, which is kind of a little bit for me uh, personally, it's overwhelming. Uh, and uh, more importantly, uh, the amount of time and cost that is spent on these disciplines uh, hasn't really scaled or performed well. Um, and uh, usually if you see this uh, traditional uh, methodologies, uh, you see data quality as an add-on to any of those other uh, uh, main components in terms of governance foundation or process procedure peoples. Uh, but not as a primary focus, which is a very, very critical component, which has been missing over the last two decades or even before that too. Uh, further, uh, if you see some of these data management products, which is out there, uh, the lack of innovation is uh, overwhelming and has not gone uh, to the point, uh, uh, grown, grown to the point where we are left with the unhappy customers and experience. Uh, so this is the kind of landscape we are in. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a Gartner slide, uh, which kind of pretty much tells the whole story in a nutshell. Uh, I like this because it kind of divides into this uh, two quadrant, two, two decades, uh, 90s to 2010 and 2010 to 2020. Uh, if you see both of those on the left side, you'll see uh, how we have been doing BA data warehousing and then MDM, uh, all these big data concepts coming in. But still the fundamental challenge always revolves around uh, data quality. Um, if you see from 2010 to 2020, the same thing, right? Uh, like big data projects, AAML, uh, mobility and all those things. But again, still the data quality aspects are still there. Uh, today, if I point to any one of the audience and ask how much percentage of data quality is good in your organizations, it's very hard to answer that because uh, the whole data quality is more of a, um, uh, uh, there is a lack of consensus among us. And then also it's very hard to determine because there is no process standards which kind of governs. And then there is also this business process-based and outcome-based measurement of data quality, which is not enabled in any of the organizations today. Uh, because of all this, 88% uh, of the data that we have today is uh, uh, untouched and we don't know how much of the relevance. Uh, usually most of the organizations and the users revolve around this remaining 12 percentage as uh, predicted by a uh, uh, based on a research study, which kind of points out how important a data quality is, uh, more actionable, more outcome focused. Uh, this uh, slide, again, if I see, uh, it's a nice uh, pyramid which kind of tells about how outcome driven strategy needs a uh, lower level data and metrics, uh, more DQ metrics. Uh, uh, so obviously everything starts from a higher level business strategy and an outcome focus, which kind of translates into performance metrics and KPI. But what's missing uh, over the years is to connect this bottom level data quality metrics back to the business outcomes. And if you cannot do that, then the leadership and the strategies who is in the organizations is not able to measure how much of a percentage improvements or how much of a significance they can do or contribute of any initiatives of sort. Uh, this is a fundamental challenge. And so what um, I'm preaching here is uh, like uh, not having this outcome focus, not having a focus of data quality has been a bigger problem in the past. And that's where we want to have shift that focus and more for a DQ for primary focus. Um, this is also makes sense when you look into the amount of data that has been growing. 
uh, if you see in the last uh, uh, decade and in the further decade that's going to be happening, the amount of data that is growing is enormous. Uh, these are numbers that everyone knows of it. Uh, today, we live in an environment where data is generated faster uh, ever than before. And in fact, like the amount of data that we produce is far much more higher than the data that we can consume. Further uh, organizations uh, take into FinTech or any other uh, uh, vertical domains, uh, data is spread across on-premises, uh, third-party systems, sometimes tied into APIs or legacy systems. Uh, not just one cloud, it could be even multi-cloud. Uh, we use a lot of different vendors for different purposes in terms of compliance, privacies and preferences and et cetera. So we are primarily left out in a place where data is growing faster. We don't know the relevance of the data today. Uh, the traditional data management practices has not worked well. Uh, further, uh, with the amount of data that is sp spread across multiple locations, we need something that is uh, faster, agile, something that on the spot evaluates your data quality and then also gives you more information uh, which can be tied back into outcome. Uh, if you look into, uh, there's a chart here. Uh, this is a study by Gartner in 2019 and it just kind of tells like how 57% of the organizations do not have any ability to measure uh, DQ. Uh, and in some cases, uh, they have informal metrics, but not necessarily a standardized process or a governance practice, which is starting with DQ. Uh, so the way I see DQ is it cannot be just a one-time approach or you measure it over a period of time and just leave it. Uh, I strongly believe in a continuum of a process and cycle. And as you see here, uh, I have outlined the four different steps that needs to have in any kind of data quality process uh, or uh, uh, tool sets that you may have. Uh, so the first is the ability to connect to all those data sources, which is everywhere, uh, anywhere. Uh, and then uh, the second uh, is the measurement. Uh, uh, traditionally, if you see the rules-based approaches has been there uh, with the amount of growth in data, we cannot afford that and nobody has any more time to go and manage a set of rules. You need an out of the box, no rules approach uh, or a way of monitoring that makes it easy uh, in terms of ongoing measurement. Uh, and then we don't, sh we shouldn't stop there. Measurement is the very first critical step of understanding where we are, but it does not necessarily help us to go where we should be. Uh, so in that aspect, we definitely need to improve the bad records into good records or whatever uh, the problems that has been identified from a data quality standpoint. So that gets into this improve piece. And then later, how do we sustain this over a period of time and make it more continuous and ongoing in a way that it operates as just like any other process or products or uh, operation uh, aspects of that that may have in a given organization. So this uh, continuum is very, very critical uh, apart from the need for DQ uh, is uh, what I see. So as I talked in the previous slide, uh, uh, data quality measurement cannot be manual, uh, which has been uh, what we have seen in the last two decades as well. Uh, so the way we uh, do here in DQ Labs is uh, uh, automate first. There are two uh, principles that we take very close to heart from a product uh, development and uh, life cycle. Uh, one is uh, automation first. Anything that we can automate should be automated. Uh, it may be a simple uh, uh, pattern based or it could be as complex as based of algorithms in AAML. Uh, but I think the uh, closest to the heart from a uh, approach standpoint is uh, automate first. And the second thing is relevance. Uh, relevance is very uh, uh, subjective, uh, but uh, how we do that is we need to be able to provide relevant metrics. Uh, either it could be an outcome based uh, or it could be uh, a tool that may be using from a catalog or governance standpoint, which could be ingested into that. Uh, or if you're looking into lineage, you need to not just look at the lineage from a root cause analysis or an impact analysis, but in terms of uh, the quality attributes too. Like, I mean, is this a relevant quality attribute that we need to care about? Or is it a relevant attribute that we need to even do a root cause analysis or link a impact analysis? Uh, and even from a search and discovery standpoint, right? What's the point of uh, searching and discovering a low quality attributes? Uh, uh, it makes sense from a semantic search or in terms of catalog search, you need to be able to find, uh, if I'm looking for emails, I need to be looking for high quality emails, which is uh, the contributing sources across these things. Uh, so we take this relevance from that and power metrics 
uh, which allows us to do a lot of different uh, uh, business processes or enablements for any of those things that you may be doing. Uh, one thing we do in terms of this uh, automation first is uh, not only in terms of uh, uh, pulling the data, um, we're just using native connectors, but also in terms of classifying using uh, a semantic based. Uh, a semantic is more of a business context. Uh, a number in a business context could be a phone number or a social security number, uh, or it could be uh, something else or a passport number, et cetera. Uh, how do we know what is very relevant at the point of ingestion? And that is what we do uh, in an automated way to help organizations understand this is the business context of this uh, uh, attribute, which allows us to now overlay any kind of data quality uh, automation that we need to do and also measure the metrics around that. So this helps uh, to go from uh, metrics uh, to more business outcome based remediation. Uh, and that kind of is what we preach from a product standpoint. And that's what we have been doing and building more and more features towards uh, those two areas of automate and relevance first approach along with the DQ. Uh, uh, the, so this is a, a good uh, slide, which kind of pretty much tells about what DQ Labs is. Uh, DQ Labs as it is, is uh, data quality focus. That's why the em emphasis on DQ. Uh, we are a data quality centric platform. Uh, uh, we preach data quality first approach versus any other methodologies or processes. Uh, uh, and how we do that is using this automation uh, and a, uh, using AAML plus also this relevance metric. Uh, so if you see uh, how to, if you look at this chart and uh, how to read this is by following the numbers, one, two, three, starting from the bottom left. Uh, of course, we do have connectors as well as pointing to any of those data uh, sources, uh, either it's a relational, no SQL, no, uh, uh, or it could be streaming data or a big data environment we connect to it. Uh, we get to the process of a semantic discovery and classification, which allows us to understand what is the business context of an attribute, takes it to the next level of measurement of data quality. Uh, if it is SSN, of course, we know what SSN formats, checks, blocks of numbers issued, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly, for other types of attributes, uh, we also have created a way how you can define your own semantic uh, uh, classifications and models on top of that, which allows us to uh, decipher any kind of loan numbers or any kind of other uh, attributes, which may be very specific to your vertical and domain uh, knowledge. Uh, primarily allows us to measure the data quality of those uh, over a period of time or at a given snapshot. Uh, so as I was pointing out, uh, measurement is one component, uh, but we don't stop just there. We just try to take an automated approach of uh, improving the data. Uh, when I say improving, it's just like cleansing. Uh, uh, and the difference between any of those tools you may be using this is what DQ Labs as a platform offers is, uh, it's all automated and makes it easy. So as a business user, uh, you can come here and just connect to whatever, and all of those things is automated and does it automatically. Uh, and uh, and we have made it seamless in a way that it is very easy and uh, useful, and uh, you're not overwhelmed with the amount of technologies or management of any of those functions or silos of sort. Uh, in this improved data quality, uh, we clean the data. Uh, example, I will show some examples to make sense of this. Uh, we don't just do it in a single column. We do it in multi-column, multi-data set, cross data set, and et cetera. Uh, so which makes it more uh, powerful in terms of data preparation or data enrichment or even cleansing as it is based on of a known or reference data uh, set. Uh, so as this process happens, then we also look into the data volatility in terms of more uh, anomaly deductions, outlayer deductions, and ongoing measurement of DQ uh, towards a, a continuum, which allows us to monitor and also calculate drift in data, uh, deviations of data, anything, any, any, any kind of outliers, anomalies of sort, what used to be a benchmark and uh, what is now different from that when it deviates uh, is all measured and uh, alerted back to the uh, users, which can be notified, or it could be even gone back into some kind of uh, management process in terms of measurement of data quality. Uh, so this uh, uh, three, four, five uh, uh, measurement and together acting uh, makes it easy uh, for an ongoing stat, uh, ongoing uh, data quality measurement. And then also uh, we have created this model where uh, all these uh, good records can be fed into some kind of consolidated agile high quality data models, uh, which could be used later back as a reference data for cleaning. 
so this is kind of like the agile MDM of sort, but it's primarily to, uh, triggered towards uh, data quality uh, in mind, uh, how we can get this uh, high data quality records together in a way that it can be also used back to any new data that is coming in. Uh, so that's uh, kind of the high level uh, platform overview in terms of how we look into from a data quality centric standpoint. Uh, if you look uh, even from a data quality metrics, uh, we just don't go to do it at one level, we do it at three levels. Uh, the first one is a data quality score based on the uh, traditional objective uh, dimensions, but we don't just stop at objective dimensions. We just take it to from a subjective dimensions. Usually your subjective are reliability, integrity, precision, existence, which is usually collected either based on CSAT or survey or user feedbacks and et cetera. We have integrated our user collaborations and usages of the data or data sets or attributes into a seamless way that we are able to now measure not just from an objective dimension, but also on the subjective dimensions as well. Uh, so that over in, uh, overall can be uh, retrieved as a DQ score, a data quality score, and uh, measured at, uh, over a period of time as well, uh, trending and et cetera. The second score, what we have and provided is uh, an impact score. Uh, that is uh, primarily the amount of bad records that is turned into good. Uh, so this come, talks about the data, automated data cleansing, data preparation levels, and et cetera, uh, which kind of makes it uh, easy for users to see. Uh, normally, this is where the data quality was, and now we are able to make an impact of 5%, 10%, and et cetera. Uh, so these all could be now leveraged into any kind of KPA performance metrics back into business outcomes based. Uh, the third level of scoring that we provide here is the volatility of the data. Uh, the best example is like uh, any data uh, that you measure over a period of time. Uh, use traditionally has a uh, limit uh, in terms of upper bound and lower bound. And when it deviates from the benchmark, uh, there is something that's happening. Uh, it could be a bad data quality issue that needs to be looked into it, or it could be driven based on some economic factors, uh, which uh, is totally legit and it could be okay to happen that way. But either ways, there is something that's happening that we need to look into it. So this is not necessarily an indicator of data quality, but at the same time, something that may evolve into a, a bad data quality aspect of it. So uh, more uh, uh, of this uh, drift level allows you to give into whether it's a high level of drift or medium or low. Uh, which primarily allows us to now, in conjunction with DQ score and impact score, provides us overall uh, understanding of your organizations across every attribute that you have in an automated uh, measurement. Uh, this allows you to uh, easily ingest into any of those uh, 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 other platforms you may use or tools you use and bring it in terms of management of data. Uh, these are some examples of how we have used uh, 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 emerging technologies such as AAMO in different aspects. Uh, the way you read this pyramid is by uh, going from lower to upper. Uh, uh, if you remember the previous slide where I was showing the six different uh, functions and modules that is uh, embedded as part of the product, uh, it, it, it kind of follows the same uh, modules, uh, starting from the ingestion layer, how we automatically ingest and uh, automatically classify it as a semantic uh, 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 context of the data and the attributes. And then also we profile it automatically using frequency analysis, pattern analysis, statistical based, uh, continuous monitoring of data gaps or missing data or drifts. And then also doing some kind of smart curation, which allows us to uh, help uh, the platform learn uh, anything that may be uh, needed automatically, even if it is not defined at the first purposes, first uh, time when you use it. Um, so these are uh, the way we have used in different uh, uh, modules, uh, but primarily, again, as I was pointing out, uh, using an automation approach. Uh, 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 so let me go real quick and show you a couple uh, uh, screen uh, shares here uh, so you can see the product a uh, little bit. So if you see this one, uh, this is a kind of like a catalog of all your data sets that you've connected. And uh, the main important things I want to highlight here is you can pretty much connect to any of those uh, different types of connectors. Uh, for this particular uh, uh, conference, I just connected with Salesforce, Hadoop, some Snowflake, Oracle, REST API base. Uh, and you have an attribute, you have a data quality score and also an impact score for each one of those data sources. Uh, not only that, uh, you also have this ability to 
search. Uh, so here, for example, I can simply come here and search email. And then also like I can search the sensitivity level. I can define uh, higher data quality scores. Uh, and then also even if I want to do uh, pick any kind of uh, so steps that I may be needing, uh, or even I can go and say like I want a particular uh, users and et cetera, uh, whichever I want. Um, uh, so this could be altered at any point of time and you can use any of those variations to find it. Uh, so now when I search on email, you can see like email is uh, not always defined by uh, developers and engineers as email. Sometimes it could be a username or it could be a, a totally a different flag which doesn't have any uh, as, uh, relation to it. E address is an example username, but platform is smart enough to identify all this based on the semantic discovery uh, and uh, bring in all this data and give the data quality scores and makes it easy for us to do. Uh, Raj, you got about four minutes before the Q&A starts. Okay, good. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, so uh, I was saying like uh, you have native connectors, you can simply pick, uh, choose any of those connector types and then give the configuration. That's all that is needed. Uh, once it's needed, it just goes through this process of uh, three steps in terms of profiling, curation, and uh, learning as part of that process. And primarily what it happens is like for every uh, data set or every connection you make, you have a data source level scoring, you have a data set level scoring here, and then also for every attribute within the platform, you have a score that is uh, interested to, if there is any kind of uh, catalog information which is there either in your platform already or in another platform we can integrate with that platform and also get that information as well so you can see both the catalog information plus your data quality score um, another quick way I kind of a little bit touched about this how lineage is important but lineage without quality uh, uh, does not necessarily add as much as value so here is an example of how you can see a color coded or labeled attribute on top of a data quality score uh, you can simply uh, associate all this. Uh, so we have primarily color coded in three different ways uh, of uh, how you can see red, uh, green, yellow, uh, red being the lowest, uh, et cetera. Uh, the profile here is a simple example of a profile, what we do from a data quality standpoint. Again, as I said, like this is all automated and it just, all this information is given you uh, to uh, look in case if you need to do it. Uh, so example of this is here, you can see some, there are some bad records identified here. Uh, most of the tool sets just show how much percentage of records is bad and it does not necessarily give a real time view into of your data. Uh, so in, in this case, <clears throat> what we are showing here is uh, you can real time query any of those data and then uh, look into it and then uh, see the actual bad record that comes along with that. Uh, so in this case, if you see like it's a real consumer first name, we are talking, but we see some business name that's coming in, uh, which does not make any sense. So all of this uh, bad records is identified with this uh, red marks uh, and you can go through it. Uh, we have different levels of checks that we do. If you want to add any kind of custom rules, which could be either SQL based or function based, we do support that uh, ability to uh, create it, but you create once and apply it across your organization, not necessarily from a data table or a column specific, uh, which makes it easy. Uh, here is an example of a data preparation or an impact, uh, how we turn bad records into good records. Uh, here is an example of how you see all these bad values, uh, which is not just, uh, the city is not necessarily dependent on that one column, it is dependent on multi columns. Uh, it's dependent on address, street, uh, state and uh, the country and the, of course the zip code and the latitude longitude. Uh, so we kind of look into this cross column analysis automatically and then try to figure out what is the right value and then change that records and calculate the impact percentage and bring it back to the higher level. Uh, in some cases where your data is uh, uh, totally new and we don't know anything and when we are using some kind of statistical or uh, uh, more uh, uh, AML based algorithm based on distance or similarities. You can see like uh, without even having any understanding of the data, we automatically clean all those things. And then also we give an uh, uh, user input uh, way when the confidence is less from a reinforcement learning standpoint uh, to see if this is good or not. And by this way, the platform learns as it goes uh, overall. Uh, last, uh, it, we give a organization level dashboard, both from a governance and quality standpoint, uh, overall quality for organizations, 
your timelines. Uh, you can even do domain level scoring if you need uh, any kind of filtering uh, and, and your user usage information along with sensitivity analysis. Um, and uh, all in all, with a focus towards data quality. Now, organizations which uh, were not able to answer before how much percentage of your data is good or bad, now can using DQ Labs be able to tell easily in an automated way. Uh, that's primarily what I had uh, for this. Hopefully you had uh, enough information. And if you have, we are in the booth and uh, we have representatives in the booth uh, for you to show detailed demo. If not, reach out to me in email or LinkedIn or whatever your medium of choice. Uh, that's primarily it. Let me go to the uh, question and session. Okay, the first question I have is, uh, is the semantic discovery slash classification stage purely automated via a platform? Uh, yes. Uh, so we do have uh, multiple levels of semantic discovery. Uh, the first one is uh, more simple. Like for example, uh, uh, we don't have to use any kind of complex uh, algorithms like uh, uh, token base or uh, all these uh, uh, complex uh, algorithms, but it could be simple as like a pattern based uh, example as uh, 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 like a phone number in some kind of formatting. Uh, uh, so. So the first level of classification that we do automatically is by using some of this a simple pattern base. But as it goes more and more, then we use more of this AAML based and also training data base. So that comes automated as part of the platform. Uh, we also provide a way for the users to classify if we had misclassified. Uh, so that uh, we consider that as a learning opportunity. So for example, for whatever reason, if you have classified a SSS and a phone number and the user changes that from phone to SSN. Now we have a learning that has been made and that is also uh, included as part of our ongoing uh, learning process. Uh, so this way of coming out of the box with some kind of discovery and classification and later on uh, 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 building up on top of that uh, more and more uh, and learning uh, helps the organizations to align to your data culture uh, and then uh, overlay whatever your level of classifications automatically. Uh, the main focus of what we have tried to do is uh, make it less technical and more business user friendly and not delve into the management of data quality from an attribute standpoint, but in terms of outcome based and et cetera. So to, to that point, we are also even looking into uh, providing like business uh, outcome specific dashboards. Uh, how do you enable it much more, more easy for your uh, data stewards uh, and not just put in the hands of the engineers and et cetera. Uh, can you provide uh, who I can reach out to discuss? Oh, definitely. So uh, so you can reach out to uh, either me, Raj at dqlabs.ai, or uh, we have a couple others in the call, uh, sp at dqlabs.ai. Uh, any, any one of those uh, uh, individuals would be fine. Uh, so uh, I think we are coming close to the hour. Jim, uh, is there anything else uh, uh, you want us to answer? Um, no, it looks like all the questions um, that your audience had you've answered um so uh, you know you could probably get, let them leave a little early and uh, luis has got a little uh, closing for us so all right thank you raj uh thank you for this great presentation and thanks to our attendees for tuning in uh please complete the edw conference session survey located at the bottom of this page uh the next session will start in a few minutes thank you raj thank you thank you everyone bye-bye